This is the Paul Garmerian Cigar Cutter that I reviewed back in 2015. It cost $22, it's made of plastic, and it cuts cigars really well. This is the Paul Garmerian Super Sheffield Cutter. It's made of metal and we paid $550 for it. Now, the story behind the Super Sheffield Cutter is fascinating and it starts back in 1991. That was when Paul Garmerian started selling his cigars on a national level. A year later, he started selling accessories for those cigars, things like leather cases and ashtrays, and yes, you guessed it, cigar cutters. Now, even back then, the Super Sheffield Cutter was considered remarkable. It was handmade in England by a man named Frank Marshall of Precision Engineering. Unfortunately, Marshall died in 1999, and in those seven years, only 1,200 of these cigar cutters were made. Now, there were four different finishes in the, when they were released. They were platinum, which this is, uh, gold, black, and bronze. And the retail price at the time was $200, which included a nice fitted leather case. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a separate cutter that Paul Garmerian still sells. It's $22, and it comes in seven different colors. However, this cutter only cuts cigars up to about 48 ring gauge, while the Super Sheffield cutter cuts cigars up to about 58 ring gauge. Now, in terms of physical specifications, the Super Sheffield cutter is a single guillotine style cutter, and the case is at, was actually made out of aircraft grade aluminum. It's a handmade cutter in England. The blade was affixed to one fourth of a thousandth of an inch, which basically refers to the amount of play or jiggle that there is as the blade travels along the track. The less motion there is, the straighter and the cleaner cut you're going to get. Now, the cutter weighs uh, 18 and a half grams, is only 0.2 inches thick, measures 2.5 inches long when it's closed, and 3.5 inches when it's fully open like so, and it's only 1.25 inches tall. Now, it's capable of cutting a 52 ring gauge cigar, and although you can obviously get larger cigars into the opening and cut them, anything above about a 58 ring gauge, and you're going to just have some major issues. Now, uh, enough about all that. Let's uh, cut some cigars, right? So, the, uh, the operation of the Super Sheffield Cutter is uh, fairly, fairly simple. You basically pick it up, pull it open, put the cigar cap into the cutter, and close it. Now, every single time I use this cutter, I got a really, really good cut. And, uh, you know, it's basically a razor blade that's attached to this thing, so it's not a surprise, but it, the action is smooth, it's, uh, it's very easy to use, and uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling to know that you're going to pick up a cigar and it's going to be cut perfectly every single time. Now, one of the cool things that is about this cutter, besides all the things uh, that uh, I've already mentioned, is the fact that when you actually cut the, the uh, cap off of the cutter, because the, there's a lip right in the middle, the, the blade doesn't go all the way to the end uh, inside of the case. And so there's a lip just a little bit. And what it does is it allows that cap to be caught right there uh, on the edge. And so what happens is every time you cut that cutter, uh, cut, that, uh, cut that cap off, it's caught there and you can actually take it off at your leisure and decide what to do with it. Now, in terms of actually using the cutter, basically what I do is I pick up the cutter the best way for me. Uh, I open it up. It does take two hands to open this cutter up. It's a, it's a very stiff pulling out. Interestingly, not as stiff going in, not even close. But there's no play in that, so you're not going to be, it's not going to be, you know, coming open on its own or anything like that. But you open it up, and uh, I put my middle finger on the uh, right side, and I put my thumb uh, where the uh, blade is, and then I put my uh, index finger right here on top to give myself a little bit of uh, added uh, support there. You take the uh, cigar cap that you're going to put into it, put it right into there. You're going to push it, uh, you know, if it's a larger cigar, this is a 50. If you, if you have a 50 or something, you're going to push it all the way against there if you want. You do have a, quite a bit of visibility when it comes to how much you're taking off, so you can decide. Um, but a lot of times I'll just put it right straight up there, and then you, in a very clean motion, you push through, uh, and it just pushes right through there. Now, as you saw, that cap did not, stand, uh, did not uh, stay in the cigar cutter uh, this time. It, that happened every once in a while. Um, certainly, it was, uh, for the vast majority of the time, the cap stayed in, in, the, uh, in the opening and was stuck there as it's supposed to be. Uh, certainly, it didn't happen enough for me to get too annoyed at it. So you can see, a really, really great cut. 
uh, pretty much every time. And that is how you use it. Now, as I normally do, I'm going to go through some good things and some bad things that I uh, that I liked about this cutter, and that uh, some things that uh, I uh, you know wish weren't necessarily the case. Uh, on the good side, uh, pretty much the every time I uh, opened up and used this cutter on a cigar under 58 ring gauge, I walked away with a great cut. Uh, it was uh, very obvious that you know after a short time that when I opened it up and used it, there were not going to be any problems. That is very rare when it comes to cigar cutters and something that uh, really, really impressed me. Now, it's extremely small. It's very light. It makes it a breeze to carry around. You barely notice it in your pocket. I, there were multiple times when I forgot that I actually had it in my pocket. Um, and uh, that's really, really great in terms of, you know, being able to port, you know, ha having to have uh, a portability for that. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, the vast majority of the time, the tobacco uh, was caught, the, the cap was caught in that, uh, that lip that is, uh, that is there designed to, to actually do that. Sometimes it didn't, very, very few times. But for the most part, when you cut a cap off, you decide where you're going to put it off. And the cuts are so straight and so clean that there's very few uh, pieces of tobacco that are left over at all. Now, you know, one of the cool things that I love about this cutter, besides just the physicality of it, is the idea that the background and the origin of the cutter are fascinating. And this is really one of the true holy grail accessories in the cigar world. Um, plenty of cigars that, uh, you know, holy grail cigars, uh, so to speak. Um, but accessory-wise, this is one of those that people talk about still with reverence for a reason. Uh, and, um, you know, people who are, have been in the industry so long, uh, they, they really love this kind of uh, cutter. And um, they, they know what it is and they talk about it for sure. Now, having said all of that, there's some things that I uh, really don't like about this cutter. And, it, you know, it comes down to availability and price for the most part. Uh, there was only 1,200 of these cutters made. And that means that even if they do come up for sale at some point, uh, you're going to pay out the nose for them most likely. We paid 550 for ours. It's not unusual to have them go on eBay or something of that nature for about $1,000 for an unused sample. Now, in addition to that, the idea that these things are, you know, very small in terms of what cigars you can cut uh, these days. Now, back then, of course, it was made for cigars that were smaller ring gauges. Uh, but if you're going to cut cigars over 58 ring gauge, this is really, really not the cutter for you. Uh, you can get 58, uh, you know, get a little bit of the cap off the 58 enough to draw, or at least I could. Uh, however, anything bigger than that, and this, this cutter is basically useless. Now, finally, there's the fact that you know, because of the fact that this, uh, these cutters are not made anymore and the person who originally made them uh, is gone, um, th if something happens to these cutters, you know, if the, if the blade gets wonky or if, if, it, uh, if you drop it and it, um, it, it, you know, comes, the track comes uh, loose or something of that nature, there's really not much you can do about it. Um, these are handmade and um, it's just not something that you can just send off to a, a cutter, you know, a cutter place like Zycar or someplace that has a, a, uh, a warranty or something of that nature. Uh, these things are, you know, the way that they are is the way you're going to get it. And if you break it or if it, something happens to it, then um, you're basically SOL. Now, normally we end these reviews answering the question of whether we think that you should buy the accessory that we're reviewing. That's a little more difficult with a product that's been out of production for more than two decades. Do I recommend you buying this this uh, cutter? Absolutely I do, but not because you need to spend $550 or $1,000 for that matter to get great cuts. In fact, you can get pretty much the same cuts from a product that's $20 and is per available right now from the same company. No, the reason I recommend the Super Chef Field Cutter is because it's special. It's made of quality materials. It was handmade. There's so few of them. And it really is the pinnacle of precision engineering when it comes to cigar cutters. I don't think there'll ever be another cutter that is made quite like this one and has the backstory that this one has. Now, listen, I understand that the idea of a you know, white whale when it comes to cigar cutters as opposed to actual cigars is a foreign concept to most of the people who are going to be watching this video. However, this has been my white whale cigar cutter for a long, long time. And I have to tell you, after, after using it for a month, I can tell you that it has more than lived up to my expectations. So that's my opinion for all of your cigar needs when it comes to news and reviews. Go to halfwheel.com.